So exciting news, Universal Lando is getting a brand new roller coaster next summer. In this video, we're looking at where it will be, what the ride will be like, and what progress has been made as of November 2020. So to understand why Universal is getting a new coaster, we need to go back 13 and a half years to May 2007. This was the year that Universal Orlando announced that it would be bringing the world of Harry Potter to life with the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Universal was really clever in the way it did this because it built this new land around two existing attractions. Universal closed the Merlinwood area of Universal's Islands of Adventure and rethemed Dueling Dragons to Dragon Challenge and the Flying Unicorn became Flight of the Hippogriff. After adding in the Hogsmeade shops and restaurants, creating Hogwarts and Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey and hey presto, $265 million later, we got the new land in 2010. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter was a huge success and we can pretty much single-handedly say that it saved the fortunes of Universal's Park which had seen years of declining guest numbers. In 2010, guest numbers were up by a record 36%. By the end of 2011, Universal had already announced it was expanding the land. This time, it brought a whole new land to Universal Studios Florida and, in a world first, built a ride that connects the two parks seamlessly. In 2011, Diagon Alley opened, along with the Hogwarts Express. But Universal still wasn't done, as in 2017, Dragon Challenge came to the end of its days as it was closed. By closing the ride down while the resort's attendance was going up, Universal put itself in a difficult position as it significantly reduced the park's capacity. Over 3,000 people an hour could ride the two coasters, so if they weren't there, in the queue, or riding, ride weights would go up for everything else. So Universal scrambled to build Dueling Dragons replacement as quickly as possible, and in just 21 months the two coasters had been demolished and had been replaced by Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. This opened in summer 2019. Hagrid's is a much more technologically advanced coaster with a strong storyline, some thrills, but also crucially it's one with a much lower height requirement. The 54 inch height requirement was now just 48 inches. Around 1700 people an hour can theoretically ride the coaster too, which is pretty good for a coaster. Now, in 2020, Universal is almost ready to give us our second coaster back. I'm still gutted that Universal got rid of Dueling Dragons, but it looks like this second coaster will make up for it. Islands of Adventure, which used to be known for its thrills, has recently been lacking a major thrill ride, with only the Incredible Hulk coaster taking the brunt over the last few years. Next summer though, in 2021, Velocicoaster will be opening in the Jurassic Park area of Islands of Adventure. This promises to bring us adrenaline junkies the thrill we've been waiting for. Plus, it will finally plug that capacity gap that was left when Dueling Dragons closed. For years there had been rumours that the incredibly intense flying dinosaur coaster from Universal Studios Japan would be making it over to Orlando, but not quite. Instead we're getting an entirely new and unique attraction. The construction of Velocicoaster has been hilarious to watch because after one year of clearing land, laying the foundations, taking delivery of track pieces and actually building the coaster, which is very much in public view, Universal denied anything was going on. And over a year later, it still had not announced that it was building a new ride. Finally, on the 29th of September 2020, about six weeks ago, Universal finally told us the truth. It wasn't building a churro stand. It was quite obviously building a brand new roller coaster. Velocicoaster will have 4,700 feet of track, which is around 1,000 feet longer than the Incredible Hulk coaster, but around 400 feet shorter than Hagrid's. This ride does have some more similarities to Hagrid's in that this is a multiple launch coaster, so there's no lift hill here. We'll have two launches, and the second one will have guests reaching speeds of 70 miles an hour in just 2.4 seconds, so that's 112 kilometers an hour. It's 20 miles per hour faster than Hagrid's, three miles per hour faster than the Incredible Hulk, five miles per hour faster than Rip Ride Rocket, and faster than either of the coasters that were part of Dueling Dragons. In fact, this is going to be Universal's fastest ever coaster, and just come shy of being Orlando's fastest. Mako at SeaWorld takes that crown at 73 miles an hour. And after some research, I think that this is the fastest coaster at any Universal Park in the world, which is super exciting. This will also be the park's tallest ever ride, as you'll reach heights of 155 feet, and that's just shy of the 167 feet that Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket is next door. There's no doubt that this will be one thrilling coaster. We can expect 12 seconds of airtime, four inversions, including a 360 degree barrel roll over the lagoon, and in a first for the resort, the coaster trains will not have the shoulder harness style restraints despite going upside down. Here we'll have the lap bar, which is becoming increasingly common on modern coasters. The trains themselves look incredibly sleek and modern, and the height requirement for this ride is 51 inches. The story of Velocicoaster is that you'll be joining the original cast of the films, 
as Jurassic World unveils its carnivore expansion. So you're going to take part in a high-speed chase and you can feel the rush of the hunt while racing alongside a Velociraptor pack. Universal hasn't released official details as to how long the ride duration is, but Amusement Insider on YouTube, who very kindly allowed us to use this video here, has been timing the test runs and put them side by side with the computer simulation, and he reckons that the actual ride duration between the first launch and the final break run will be about 1 minute and 17 seconds. Which to put that into perspective is almost exactly the same length as the Incredible Hulk coaster. Plus, then we can add in the time between the station and the first launch, and between the final break run and the station, and we can expect the ride experience to be just under two minutes. It does look like there's going to be some kind of show scene before the first launch, and possibly one after the last break run too. Over the past few weeks, we have seen wrapped up dinosaur figures be craned into and placed around the track layout. It's not clear if these are animatronics that move or just static figures, but it does seem like you'll see quite a few of these velociraptors very close to you while you're on the ride. Universal's own promo video shows flashing lights and velociraptors in the paddock being released just as you're sent into the first launch, but it'll be interesting to see if these are screen based or real or a mix of both. I'm betting on Universal using screens for this as it's shown in their teaser videos, and this is universal after all. And I'm super excited for this coaster. It's definitely the only thing that's captured my imagination since Diagon Alley. As with the exception of Hagrid's, the other new attractions have all been quite mediocre in the last few years. Jimmy Fallon, Kong, Fast and Furious. It's also great that this isn't yet another simulator, screen-based ride, as a resort is just full of those now. The big question is, what's next for Universal Orlando? The parks have quite a solid lineup now. Universal has promised us the third theme park, Epic Universe, but have the current world events delayed that or stop them altogether? It's too early to tell, I think. In the long run, Epic Universe will be coming. Will it be 2023 as its original date? Not anymore. Universal has officially said that the project is on hold and the construction has stopped. So what will Universal do in the meantime? Is the Super Nintendo World Land going to end up coming to USF instead of the new park, maybe? Could Fear Factor finally be saying its last goodbye? As I say, it's too early to tell, and even Universal itself probably doesn't know at the moment. Instead, both us and Universal can only do one thing, which is look ahead to next summer, enjoy this attraction, and then see what happens. I can definitely see them slowly retheming Jurassic Park to Jurassic World at the very least over the coming year. If you enjoyed this video, then check out the other videos on this channel about Super Nintendo World opening next spring at Universal Studios Japan, for example. You might also be interested in Universal's entirely new theme park opening in Beijing, China next spring as well, so check out our video on that. If you're visiting Universal Lando, check out our guidebook in the description. The 2021 edition of the Independent Guide to Universal Orlando is currently available to pre-order. Finally, a huge thank you to you and to everyone who has watched the video, subscribed to the channel and liked and commented on the videos. The Super Nintendo World video in particular has been extremely popular. I have lots of really cool Disney Universal and theme park videos on the way. I usually post two or three videos like this a week, so please subscribe to get those when they come out and please do leave this video a like. It'll take just a fraction of a second and the likes really help YouTube know that you've enjoyed the video and then recommend it to other people who like theme park videos. So thanks so much for doing that. Plus, let me know in the comments what you think of Velocicoaster and also if there are any particular theme park topics you'd like me to cover. I've been Geo for Independent Guides and I'll see you in the next video.